Good day everybody, this is Nelka again and today it is all about IP rating. So let's go back to the basics of lighting design or lighting. So what is an IP? When, when you heard the word IP rating or IP, what does it mean? So IP or ingress protection, so what is that? IP or ingress protection defines the protection a luminaire has from the entry of water and foreign bodies such as dust and insects. So what does it mean? Um, um, in a very, very simple word, it means that is the enclosure protection of the luminaire. So whether the, the water or the dust goes to the fitting, that is where the ingress protection is all about. So when deciding on a luminaire, one should always consider the environmental factors of the intended installation point. For example, for external or open to the elements such as rain and wind, like a garden, the IP rating of a luminaire must be IP65. So external fittings, it's a default, it should be at least IP65. If it's IP66, it's much better. If it's IP67, then it's much better as well. So another one is for internal clean controlled environment like an office, this is okay to have IP20. So IP20, it means some parts of the luminaire is open. So it's fine to have it because it's indoor, so it's okay. Um, another one is the internal dusty environment with potential water splashing. For example, is car workshop. It should be IP64. Another example for the indoor where there is a water splashing is the toilet. Toilet is okay to have IP44. So that is how this IP rating important is. So for um, when you select your luminaire, you should understand what IP rating of the luminaire should be. Another one for internal water feature, lo total submersion. Okay, so even if it's internal or external, if the luminaire will be submerged into water, it should be IP68. Like for example, you have water feature or fountain in your design but and there's a but some fittings even if it's ip68 if it's not um, uh, labeled as submersible you cannot use it in your pool so you have to make sure that you checked it to the um, lighting manufacturer or supplier that the fitting even if it's ip68 it should be it should have the word submersible Otherwise, it's, it's not applicable for a pool or a fountain if you put it inside the fountain. So, yeah, even if it's IP68, make sure there's a word of submersible because not all IP68 is submersible. All right? Okay. So, let's just uh, uh, check a little uh, in a more detailed one what is this numbers means. So, now we found out that IP means ingress protection and there's a value of numbers here the first digit and the second digit so the first digit means solids and the second digit means liquids okay so let's go one by one what are those values means so the first digit means solid one is protection against entry of solids but it's more than 50 mm okay so it's a little big so it's uh it's yeah i never seen a fitting that says ip 15 or ip 18 <laughs> okay it's either ip 20 immediately the minimum i saw in the fitting is ip 20. okay and then the, the second one uh the digit number two means protection against entry of solids but it's more than 12 mm so if you can imagine those 50 mm and 12 mm, how big it is in the actual, um, yeah, look for something else and <laughs> measure it. 
uh, we are talking about dust and small debris here okay so number number three the third digit uh, this the first digit which means of three uh, it means the protection against entry of solids bodies more than 2.5 mm so it's like very small now and four is protection against entry of solid bodies more than one mm and five protection against entry of dust so now if you can see uh, five is dust four is uh, one mm okay and six is a complete protection against entry of dust objects that's why this is the most strict one it means it's the more sealed one okay so let's go for this uh, second digit which means zero it means it is not protected for liquids and if it's one it's not uh, the protection is against the vertical falling of water drops and then two means protection against the falling of water with 15 degrees okay even if the uh, the degree of the water falling on the fitting is mentioned okay the, thir the third one or uh, number three is protection against rain okay you might think that for example my fitting is ip say 53 so it means it's now okay for outdoor uh, application um, nope it's still not <laughs> it's still not enough because it's not that protection against rain how about the splashes on it or an accidentally throwing water from it so if it's outdoor it should be ip65 okay the fourth one protection against against water splashes like what i mentioned a while ago for the toilet should be ip44 44 means protection against entry of solids bodies more than 1 mm and protection against water splashes okay so number five or uh, second digit five means protection against water jets so if you intentionally uh, water jets your luminaire it should be ip65 that's why for outdoor fittings it should be ip65 and then six protection against big waves so it has more pressure now and seven it's protection against the effect of limited periods of immersion even if it's ip67 do not try to submerge it into water or maybe you can do it but a limited period of time maybe a seconds or a few minutes and then eight means protection against the effect of total submersion but again make sure that this ip68 is really submersible for a very long time not just one hour or two hours it should be for a lifetime of the luminaire okay so let's go and check what uh, how um how it looks or how this ip rating looks like let's go for the torn uh, website and see how it goes let's look for ip rated luminaires like that start with ip20 and uh, how you will see it in the data sheet so i'll go now for the indoor lighting um, thumbnail and i will say for example select a recess modular luminaire and then for example i i have a project up an office and i will check some fittings that is enough for an office which is ip20 is fine so i'll go and check this omega circular and see what is the ip rating of this one and i will click one of this and check the data sheet and you can see here now that here at the bottom it says ip20 so it means this circular fitting is only ip20 and you can see also here in the description so it says ip20 all right with class to electrical and let's go for example my application is a toilet and i want to put some downlights so i have to make sure that my downlight is 
IP44. Some um, client IP40 is enough, but to make sure that you comply everything, make it IP44. Okay, for example, I will use this Citus LED. I will check if this Citus LED will be fit to my toilet. So I will select one of this and I will just check if it's IP20 or IP, sorry, IP44. And you can see at the bottom here, if you can see this is very small, but you can see on the top it says IP20, but on the bottom it's IP44. So do you think it fits to the toilet application? Yes, it is. Because the protection of your fitting from the bottom is IP44, so this is okay. Some clients or consultants prefer to have both for both sides up and down to be IP44. But usually IP20 and IP44 on the bottom is good enough for a toilet application. Okay, so let's go now. For example, my next project is um, um, like say industrial area where there is a, a little factory on it. So my fitting should be um, IP65. So let's go and check on this one and how this IP65 fitting looks like. So here I have, for example, the Aqua Force. This fitting is for industrial fitting. You can use this one for electrical room or some um, yeah, industrial application. So I will check this one, click on this one and see the data sheet and see where we can find the IP65. Yes, now it's mentioned IP66, so it's much better. And you can use it and see it here also. This is IK08. Later on, we will discuss what is the meaning of IK rating. But here now we can see it says IP66, so it's perfectly suited for my industrial application. Alright, so what about some fittings that for are ex external and I want it with um, protection with the water. So let's go and check some of the thorn fittings. So I'll go for the ex outdoor, um, outdoor tub and check if some of the recessed uplighters are IP68. So I'll go so to make myself easily getting this value i will just go to the filter or more filter options and i will just say i need an ip68 fitting so i'll just ch uh, check this pull down menu and select the ip68 and it will automatically filter here so i have some uplights here and some uh, recessed linear fitting so i'll go and check this one so it means this fittings are all IP68 but you can check it here in the specification or the installation mounting if it's submersible or not and if you go to the specification compact linear floodlight range blah 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 all right so now I can see let's go and double check one fitting here again if you cannot see any words saying this is submersible fitting even if it's ip68 see it says ip68 here yes so don't be fooled about looking at it as ip68 without uh saying a word submersible this means this fitting can be mounted anywhere in the outdoor but it is still not applicable for swimming pool or fountain because I cannot see any words saying that this fitting is submersible. All right, so that's it. And okay, um, what else? What else application do you think we need to discuss here? So we already mentioned the IP ratings and everything. What are, what are those numbers means? and what is IP68 means. This is the most critical one. Okay, so if you have more questions about the basics of lighting, just comment at the bottom and let me know your uh, ideas or um, what you think about this. 
if you want to check your knowledge about the basic of lighting you can go and take the exam in my course in udemy.com lighting designers exam here and see if you can answer all those 165 questions about the basics of lighting designs so in um the first 100 question is about the basics the second 20 question is about the lighting designs lighting design standards and techniques and the fifth last question is about the logical and ethical questions of a lighting designer go now and check that one if you can answer all these questions properly this is the best way you check yourself if you are now knowledgeable as being a lighting designer okay check that one